Hi everyone, I wanted to do this short video to talk a little bit more about project part four. What it is, what's due, and how to do it. So, project part number four for COM10 is what we are calling your data set and practice analysis. So you can start by asking yourself what data you have collected so far for your project. And then of course thinking, do I need to do any more? what's left for me to do, and the like. Once you have gone out and collected all of your data, then you are going to start by putting it all in front of you in some workspace. Maybe you want to spread it all out on your table. Now for every single student and for every project type, your data set is going to look a little bit different. So if you did an experiment, then your data is going to be your results, what notes you took while running the experiment with some practice analysis. Now notice I have a couple stars right there and that's because in just a moment I'm going to explain more about what the practice analysis is. But let's say that you didn't do an experiment, you did a survey. Well if you did a survey, then your data is going to be a link to your online survey, right? most likely through SurveyMonkey, also a link or an attachment of your data analysis charts from SurveyMonkey or whatever software you used, and then also some of that practice um, analysis write-up. If you did interviews for your project, your data would be the record of those interviews, whether that was in the form of a transcript, a bundle of emails because you wrote back and forth, maybe screenshots of um, a, a social media conversation that took place, um, again with some practice analysis as well. If you did a media critique or use the media method, the soapstone, then what you will actually turn in for project part four are the soap show, soapstone worksheets. There might be one or more than one that you did for the various artifacts with some of that write-up. And then finally, if you did an, an ethnography, which is unlikely in these conditions, but some of us might have done digital ethnographies because we chatted, your data set that you'll turn in for project part four would be your raw field notes turned into actual field notes Remember that difference being the notes you took on the spot and then the writing up of those so that someone else could understand them in addition to some of that early analysis. So hopefully that tells you what you will be turning in. First you'll turn in your data set. Then what is this some data analysis thing that I just mentioned? Well, once you have your data set in front of you, spread out again, maybe on a desk or a work table. Um, I know when I lived in an apartment, I didn't have uh, that type of space available. So I just spread everything out on the floor or a back patio. And first what you're going to do is look at your data set and then practice some of the analysis techniques that we did just a short time ago. First, you're going to look for any recurring themes or events even patterns that you notice in your data set, okay? You could also look, for example, for standout moments, any dialogue, nonverbal communication patterns, something that stands out to you as really significant or relevant to your research question or hypothesis. In looking for recurring themes, you always want to keep an eye on communication. So it should be recurring dialogue, recurring types of dialogue, recurring nonverbal behaviors, recurring identity behaviors, any of the things that we've talked about so far this semester. Now using that um, analysis activity that we did just earlier on this semester, you can then use those gerunds, those ING words, to label, circle, maybe even highlight in your data set where those patterns are occurring. That's a good step to take because it helps you later cut back on the time going through your data and finding those patterns again. Once you see everything in front of you, like I said, perhaps circled or highlighted um, or noted, then you're going to start taking some formal notes. And you will turn these notes in alongside your data set. Here's where we're talking about the practice data analysis. 
Now, the formal notes should begin by telling me what you think this all could mean, what your data means, and why you think it's important. You can certainly tell me what themes or patterns you found, how you're making sense of the data, maybe even start to draw some early conclusions. You can certainly start thinking about if there's a communication theory that is being reflected in your data set, and of course, any questions that you are left wondering. By writing this all out, you are one step closer to your final project, right? That final paper or presentation, that final video that you're going to be making. Now it's time to submit. So to submit, I just want to open up the creative door here, invite you in, and let you know that there are many ways that you can submit this assignment. Again, the two most important things are that you show me the data set that you collected and that you have a short write-up where you practice analyzing the data by looking for patterns and telling me what you think it might mean. Now, in order to submit, you can choose to write out your early data analysis and submit written work, for example, in a Word document, maybe a few paragraphs. But if that's really not your style, you can also submit to me a video of any and all of this um, sort of uh, talked out by you. If you don't have a video camera available or um, if there's not video on your phone or computer, maybe a laptop, then you can certainly submit audio talking about this. So on the assignment link to submit, I've clicked a box that allows students to, ins um, instead of submit just documents, actually record audio directly into the uh, submission link. But of course you can also do something creative as far as including photos, drawings, um, images, anything else that you think helps communicate, again, this, the data that you found and what you think it means. So that's pretty much it for project part four. If you have any questions, please be sure to contact me and then also join us for the data analysis workshops that we'll be doing in class. Thank you.